friends, welcome back. I hope you've had a good week. If you're new, hello, my name is Tracy. And welcome to my home here in rural Sussex, England. This week, we're gonna be flipping chairs. Now I've got four tub chairs that I picked up at auction for just five pounds each. They really were trash. Nobody wanted to buy them, but I did. And I'm gonna show you in the video a very simple technique to make these look really high end and they will last for years. Let's get into it. I do love a tub chair. They're great occasional chairs, but finding one with the right finish at the right price point can be a little bit tricky. They can be a bit boring sometimes as well. So when I saw these faux leather ones at auction that everybody else was turning their nose up at, I jumped on it. There was a lot of wear and only a little bit of tear and that can easily be solved with a little bit of glue. But they are so unbelievably comfy, I was delighted to pay £20 for them. Their bottoms were a little bit scruffy and a scruffy bottom's not a good look, darlings, is it? But they were in relatively good condition, obviously a modern construction, with feet that definitely need a bit of a revamp. I could replace the feet, but my target here is to try and do the whole project with just shopping the garage, not buying anything specific for it. Once I removed the old floor protectors, I could see exactly how the leg was attached to the chair, and it was with a hex head bolt. Fortunately, I had a large Allen key that would fit it perfectly, but you can have attachments to screwdrivers. I just didn't have one the right size to actually get that bolt loosened. So with the feet off, I can remove the bolt, set it to one side, and then I can do something with those feet and make them look a bit more palatable. Getting the feet off also means it's a lot easier to remove this horrible old black material and get the old staples out. I am going to reupholster the bottom, but I'll do that when I've finished the transformation completely and everything is dry. Taking the material off at this stage also means I can get in there, give everything a good clean, check that it's all structurally sound, and then make any repairs that are necessary. When I was giving it a good vacuum, I actually found a penny. And you know, as the saying goes, find a penny, pick it up, all day long you'll have good luck. Now a couple of them had a little bit too much spring, so I worked out that if I drilled a pilot hole and put a nice long chunky wood screw in, that would stop that. Once I was happy with the underneaths, I flipped them over, gave them a hot soapy wash and left them to dry. Now it was time to prep the feet. And I say prep because I don't know how I'm gonna finish the feet yet until I have finished the actual chairs because I don't know what's going to suit them. So for now, I've just taken these down to the blonde wood. I'm very much a waste not, want not kind of gal and I've gone right off Paris grey. So I've got some old paint there that I'm gonna mix with some en fleur to try and take that greyness away and create a nice neutral taupe colour which will form the basis of what we're about to do. I'm using a chunky round Annie Sloan chalk paint brush and I'm going straight on with the chalk paint. I'm not diluting it, I'm not spraying the material. This is the technique that I would use for leather or for leather look, uh, vinyl, that type of fabric. If it was anything else, it's a completely different technique and that's something I'll cover in another video. So it's really important that you don't water down this first coat, but also equally important, don't put it on too thickly. Once you get it covered, then just use your brush strokes up and down to smooth it out. It's a hot day, so the paint dries very quickly, so I'm working in sections. As this chair has an attached cushion, I'm using an old flat brush and standing on the seat to be able to get paint down in between. When it comes to the cracked areas, I'm really gonna work the paint into those cracks. And then again, when covered, just finish with some long, smooth strokes. Once the first coat is dried, it's on to the second. Now the trick to this second coat is to spritz your brush. Any clean old spray bottle will do. Fill it with water, spray the brush, dip the brush into the paint, 
and you'll find it goes on really smoothly. Spritz again if you feel it dragging. Now please excuse the neighbour, she's popped round to see what I'm up to. They're so nosy. As this second coat of chalk paint dries, you can see it's still got flex, it's still got movement, but we're going to increase that by slathering it with clear wax. I always liken this part of the process to putting on lots of hand cream on very dry hands. You really want to nourish this, let all that soak into the paint and then it will soak through into the material of the chair, giving it a very supple finish. It also acts as a good base for any other waxes that you want to put on any other colours and I am going to use some other colours. So what projects have you got on the go at the moment? I'd love you to tell me. Please let me know in the comments below and also let me know where in the world you are from. I just love finding out your locations. And I'd especially like to know if you are turning trash into treasure right now. So you could stop at this point if you're happy with the colour, once you've got that clear wax on, you're really protected. However, I want to do things a little bit differently and I like to kind of push the envelope on things. So I'm going to create some effects using dark wax and white wax. The coat of clear wax allows me to play around with the dark and the white. So in effect, the dark and the white are actually decorative, although, you know, ultimately they will help to protect the fabric. But at this stage, they are very decorative. And if I put too much on, I can use some clear wax to actually help neutralise it, to help take it back off. I'd really encourage you to experiment at this stage. You know, at the end of the day, this is a five pound chair. What's the worst that can happen? And if you're like me, you'll just keep going until you smile. And when you smile, you know you've done it. You know it's right. Now, I'm not trying to replicate any look or any design here. I'm just playing around with this until it gets to a state that I like. And actually, I quite like that. So I am now going to push on with my little production line. Now I know what the chair finish is going to be. I can now finish the feet. I experimented with a few things, but in the end, the dark wax was the finish that I wanted. So I'm just going to work it in on each side, on each of the feet, and then leave it overnight. And yes, I normally would have gloves on to do this, but we're about 30 degrees and I am just too hot in my gloves and I'm filthy anyway. So I'm having fun. I think the dark wax has worked really well, giving them a real vintage feel. After I finished with the waxing, I left them for a good 12 to 24 hours before I started buffing. I'm using a white rag, which is actually an old cotton bed sheet to start working my way around each of the chairs. It takes off any surplus wax and it starts to build up that lovely sheen. I will, however, be leaving them for 30 days before I sit in them. And while I've got the cloth out, let's not forget the legs. A quick buff for those. Time to give them a nice clean bottom. I've got some old lining fabric, so I'm going to sit each of the chairs on the fabric and then just mark around and cut out that shape. Folding the raw edges as I go, I'm going to staple gun it to attach and use the bolts to mark exactly where the legs go. And then it's just a case of reattach the feet and let's style. Two of them have found their way into the hallway and at this end we have this little reading nook. So I think they live quite happily there. I've also taken one upstairs to the master bedroom where it's going to sit next to the old vintage bathtub. But remember 30 days before you sit in them because it needs time to cure and then you're absolutely fine. The last one has ended up in the cottage, except this one is going up to London as my son-in-law would like it for his office and he's going to use it as a meditation chair. I hope you enjoyed that and it's given you lots of inspiration for your own creations. My three takeaways would be, number one, don't water down that first coat, just apply it thinly. Number two, on the second coat, spritz your brush 
don't water down the paint and don't spray the piece that you're painting. And number three, when you have finished everything and you've buffed it, you've popped it into its position where it's going to live, keep your bottom off. Don't sit on it for 30 days and then it will last you for years to come. If you're not subscribed already, please do turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my videos and have a good week and I hope to see you back here next time.